Filipinos have representation in theater, but Broadway is low-key racist. Leia Salonga made history with her lead role in Miss Saigon, becoming the first Filipino to win a Tony. Fast forward to today, we have the first Pinoy Alexander Hamilton with Mark De La Cruz and Broadway to Hollywood star Eva Novelzada in the trailblazing movie Yellow Rose, which also features Leia Salonga. While the faces on stage look diverse, Broadway as an institution is far from it. Take American professional sports, which is known to have white owners and mostly black athletes. Broadway is no different. Even on the occasion when shows feature POC-centered narratives, they are written and owned by white producers. So what is diversity when it comes to Broadway? Is a diverse cast enough? And will we ever see Filipino stories told on the Broadway stage? I'm Trace Gaynor, and here's what you missed on The Cheese Piece, presented by Kumu. Long before you could stream music online, you had to buy your favorite songs on paper or sheet music and play it yourself. And with the New York sheet music industry came the rise of Broadway. Classic American tunes like Take Me Out to the Ball Game and God Bless America are the first examples of musical theater entering mainstream. Even Broadway tunes like Seasons of Love and My Favorite Things still pop up on network TV and billboard charts 50 years later. Broadway songs make up some of the earliest American classics, but unfortunately are also rooted in racist traditions. American musical theater, or the musical comedy genre, was born from minstrelsy, the practice of having all white male casts perform blackness with music and slapstick comedy. This is the birthplace of blackface and of the American media's harmful stereotypes against black people as dangerous, unintelligent, and lesser than white people. Now, when compared to Hollywood, Broadway has triumphed pro-queer and pro-black stories in casting, but there's no denying its origins. Showboat, one of the first American musicals, tells the story of two flawed lovers, a criminal and the daughter of a black woman. The show equates the man's criminal history to the woman's blackness, making her heritage something to be ashamed of. West Side Story, while spotlighting Puerto Rican culture, actually mocks the island of Puerto Rico as an undeveloped place and paints Puerto Rican Americans as deserving of poor treatment in America. In the upcoming Steven Spielberg remake of West Side Story, a Latina star is cast the lead, marking a fantastic improvement from the first movie version starring a white woman as Maria. Please, we are begging, Anita and Maria are not supposed to be blonde. While both shows center on POC narratives, they were written by all-white teams and are often performed in high schools without adequate conversations around race. Now, in recent years, we've seen world-changing progressive work from Broadway stages, including feminist work like Wicked and shows like The Color Purple, which stars an all-black cast as they depict a nuanced story about the Black American experience in the South in the 1900s. And the show was produced by Oprah Winfrey herself, a huge step in the right direction. But the reality is, less than a quarter of all Broadway goers are non-white, and most communities can't access Broadway because of barriers like ticket and travel costs. So if people of color are not watching these stories that are about people of color, then why is Broadway profiting off these narratives? Hi, I'm a typical Filipino mom, and I didn't think my kids could go into entertainment. That is, until I found Kumu. On Kumu, you can create your own live stream shows or just support Filipino creators. And if you're chismosa like me, you won't want to miss One Down's weekly shows, DIY Director, and Chismis, the game show. So download now and enjoy the rest of the episode. Broadway's diversity is limited to its cast on stage. When it comes to the show's earnings, the music, the theaters, and the profits, it belongs to the white producers backstage. Despite this all, Filipino faces on stage are a huge win. In more recent years, shows about Filipino life have found their footing on stage with popular musicals like Here Lies Love and On This Side of the World. However popular, these shows still had smaller audiences and stages. That's because within Broadway, there's this concept of off-Broadway shows. An off-Broadway show describes a theater with a seating capacity between 100 and 499 people. And although it doesn't automatically transition into a Broadway run, off-Broadway shows like Dear Evan Hansen, Rent, and Hamilton eventually did. Felix Starro, produced by Mayi Theatre Company, is the first off-Broadway musical created by and starring an all-Filipino team. The story follows an undocumented Filipino immigrant in America. So an off-Broadway show like Felix Starro is a huge theater accomplishment in itself. But in a post-pandemic world where even the classics will struggle to find a profitable audience, we have to keep pushing. For us to finally land Filipino narratives on the actual Broadway stage, we need more Filipinos stepping up. 
It takes someone like Oprah to bring black narratives to Broadway, just like she did with The Color Purple. Take Jet Tolentino, a Tony Award-winning producer who immigrated from the Philippines. He was also a producer on The Color Purple, and went on to produce Lingua Franca, which was released on Netflix. Or Robert Lopez, the first and only person in the world to receive a double EGOT. Broadway has come a long way since its original productions, and although it has a long way to go, there are many Filipinos in the space who are pushing for stronger and more authentic representation. So if you ever hear about a Filipino production on stage, support it. Because one day, we will make it on Broadway.